So this is our new staff car. Some of you may have seen some pictures of it. We've kind of had this about two months now. It is a 2015 BMW i3 Rex. I, I can hear some of you already. In, in fact, look, look in the comments. Look, just now. Yeah, yeah, I know it has a petrol engine. I'm fully aware of that. So how did we end up as people who love electric vehicles with a car with a gasoline engine in the back? Well, it comes down to a combination. So we had to find a sub $20,000 vehicle because that's how much money we had that delivered a range that was usable for us to go camping and also was as much as possible electric. And that pretty much, at least at the point when we bought this, limited us to the i3 Rex. While the early Leaf is a really great car, in fact, pretty much every generation of Leaf I would have happily accepted, the new Leaf at that point was far enough away that we couldn't afford to wait. We'd have had to rent a vehicle for months on end and was really not sub $20,000. Why sub $20,000? Well, we have no credit history in the US, which makes getting things with leases quite difficult. Well, I have no credit history. And also, I do not like leasing. I like a vehicle that's mine. I do not like the idea that someone else really owns the vehicle and can decide to take it away should they have a change of mood. And I can hear some of you screaming, why isn't it a Bolt? Why isn't it a Tesla? Well, the Model 3 waiting list is somewhat longer than the week it took us to find and buy this car and the Bolt is just too expensive for us. We are building a house at the moment and there is a real limit on our funds. Realistically, we probably should not have bought this car and should have put up with our Swamp car or the Honda Insight, which it was fine. It was a very nice car in many regards, but unfortunately it had a water leak. Although it was a pretty minor leak, I just never had the time to find it, and I suspect it would have involved a lot of groveling around, a lot of running water over the car, and possibly me having to take bits of the car apart, which I just I don't have time to do at the moment with building a house. Because when I say building a house, I mean physically with my hands, taking bits of wood, cutting them up, and nailing or screwing them together. We looked at an original well, a second generation RAV4 EV with the JDemo, Chademo adapter. That would have been okay, but 160 miles real world range was kind of cutting it fine for our holidays. And yes, I say to people, you should buy a car that meets your needs 90% of the time and you can go and rent a car the rest of the time. And then I'm not living that. Why am I not living that? Because I am not an organized person. I'm organised at work, at home, my wife and I, mm. Friday night, we decide that we're going camping Saturday morning and we grab stuff and throw it in the car at six o'clock in the morning and go camping. And that is quite tricky to do if you need to rent a car to get there. And at the moment, the charging infrastructure where we live is poor enough that that really is the only option. If you go up to the Olympic Peninsula, there are effectively no rapid chargers. And that would mean that a whole chunk of the Olympic Peninsula wasn't available to us. Going out towards Mount Rainier, again, not really any opportunity to rapid charge. So realistically, we needed a vehicle that had either around 300, 250 miles of range, or we needed something with a range extender. Now we could have just gone with a plug-in hybrid, but with the range extender in the i3, my daily drive to work, I can do that just about in winter. I think I have generally got a couple of miles of range. A few days ago it was snowing heavily and actually the range extender kicked in on the way home and I'm glad it did because we ran for about 10 miles on it. So it was well outside the range of the vehicle. But normally, normally we can get, I can get to work and back and not use any gasoline, which is nice. For most of our daily driving, 
the range is fine. Would I prefer a car with more range? Yes, absolutely. If BMW offer the battery pack upgrade in this country, particularly if they offer the new pack rather than the 33 kilowatt hour pack that's currently installed, then I would consider it, certainly. BMW is one of the few manufacturers that has offered battery pack upgrades. Sadly, not for the Rex. I don't know why. As far as I know, it is exactly the same pack as is in the BEV. BMW, if you're listening, I would love a 33 kilowatt hour pack in this car. I would love something better. If you really just, just call me, it's fine. I'm, I'm up for it. So let's talk a bit about the experience. The BMW i3 is made with a lot of recycled materials, a lot of newly developed materials. There's hemp in the door panels where you can see the exposed fibers. It's got a carbon fiber reinforced plastic life shell. A lot of the materials in the door are recycled or the interior trim are recycled, a lot of the plastic, and it's produced using clean energy. So those are all things that I really, really appreciate. It doesn't feel like you're compromised on the quality. In fact, frankly, this is probably the highest quality vehicle I have not ever been in. I've been in some pretty high-end vehicles, but certainly the highest quality vehicle I've owned, and actually going from this to Nikki's Bolt, you do feel like there's a subtle difference, and I get it. I feel bad for getting it, but the automaker is intending, you know, BMW wants this to be a premium vehicle. It feels like a premium vehicle. I know someone spent probably days engineering how the doors should sound so that when you shut them, they don't sound like plastic because they are effectively plastic or very much plastic. The, the quality of the trim, even in the base model, is very nice. The GPS is terrible. I would say it is the worst GPS I have encountered by a long way. It gets very confused. It will often give us inaccurate directions because it's you're driving down a motorway and you come up to a junction and it will suddenly decide that you are no longer on the motorway. But our i3 experience has not been without problems. We picked it up from the dealer drove it home, rapid charged once on the way home, everything was fine. And then, in that first week, we had a bit of a problem. It wouldn't heat up. I mean, it wasn't every day. It was just a couple of times the car wouldn't warm up. And it does have fairly effective heated seats, so it is possible to survive as long as it's not absolutely freezing outside, but it's certainly not comfortable. And then, it went away. But we booked it in for a service, spent two weeks up at the dealer in Seattle. It refused to do that. It, it did not exhibit that problem. So two weeks later, and they, they drove it 150 miles with my permission to try and force it into producing the problem. Yeah, didn't happen. We decided at that point that we would, well, collect it, drive it. I picked it up that day, driving home it exhibited the problem, but they'd asked me to collect some more information about when the problem happened. Went to pick it up and it wasn't fully charged. I'd asked them to charge it and they put it on the rapid charger, but it hadn't charged. They said at that point that they'd had some problems with their rapid charger, put it on a level two charger and we left when the car was eh, about two thirds full. As I drove away from the dealer, I thought, it's not very warm. And then, after about 10 minutes, I went, no, it's, it's stone cold. Yeah, I went through a few different things, putting it into different modes. So it has, we drive our car in Eco Pro all the time, but I stuck it into Comfort, I stuck it into Eco Pro Plus, which is a mode where the heater doesn't, in fact, do a great deal. And I'm not sure that you can use the heater at all. I think it might just blow, recirculate air in the cabin. So we put it into comfort mode, left it a bit, didn't work. So I booked it in. The other reason I booked it in is because we took the car up to Seattle. And this is one of those occasions where I was deeply glad that we had the range extender. We knew we had about 13 miles of all electric range before we hit the 
a range extender kicking in. So, get on the rapid charger. And the car would not charge. It said it was connected, but the charger, as soon as it said it was charging, it, it would flick over to charging and then it would say connection error and disconnect. There were two chargers there, so we moved to the second charger. And that one did exactly the same thing. And we went to a fairly nearby supermarket that happens to also have a rapid charger. Unfortunately, this was the same model of rapid charger and the car again wouldn't charge. There were two of them there and we tried both and we spent a lot of time with the EVgo team on the phone getting increasingly irritated because at this point we thought it was the charger, not the car. But no one could tell us what problem was actually occurring, all it would say was connection error and because it was the same model charger with the same model firmware, it seemed likely that it was the charger. And then a faint worry appeared in my head and I thought, hang on a minute, when I picked up the car, I know it's charged off DC Rapid a couple of times before, but it has not charged off DC Rapid since we picked it up and it wouldn't charge at BMW's own charger. So we went to another charger on the way home. We actually took a detour on the way home. We had approximately 13% charge, or I think that's about six or seven miles. So we pulled over at uh, a Kia dealer that very generously has their charger available 24 hours. Well, I say generously, you have to pay, but it's available 24 hours, which is nice. Plugged in, different model of charger, different company made it. Yeah, connection error. So today I am driving back up to BMW and we are gonna drop off the car again. I am slightly concerned that what we have bought is a uh, yellow, kind of citrusy, known as a lemon. Somewhat embarrassed because I spent a long time discussing this with my wife and spent a lot of time doing research on what vehicle would work for us and having chosen the i3, it's now proving to be a bit of a problematic vehicle. So we'll see how that goes. I'm not expecting to see this car for a little while, which is a shame, but when we get it back, we'll let you know.